<clears throat> Conrad, don't, don't worry. worry. It'll, It'll happen again. again. I, I know you can get your robot to work, so that's all that matters. Um, the the onlay has returned. The onlay never went away. We, we were just too stupid to appreciate that it existed. I was as bad as everybody else. Uh, I was the one at the American Hernia Society in 2004 that said the reef stope is the standard of care, and uh, it's a great repair. But as you can see, the onlay works quite well. This is a Reeves sublay repair compared to the onlay chevrel repair, 10 centimeters, pretty good size hernia. Complica complications were less in the onlay. Uh, time off work was less. Mean stay in the hospital is less. No recurrences in either group. So the onlay is a good repair. Same thing here. This is a true chevrel reported in 2008. Onlay technique is safe, easy to perform, and reliable. Andrew Kingsnorth, ex-president of the European Hernia Society, found the same thing. Anderson, 2009, Denmark, low rate of recurrence and complication rate in the onlay repair. We just learned about the Reeves Retorectus repair. I sent those slides to Conrad. He called me up. He said, do you have any pictures of Dr. Reeves? Dr. Reeves didn't speak English and didn't like to travel. Rene Stopa spoke English and liked to travel. So that's why Stopa got all the credit when Dr. Reeves should have gotten the credit. And I thank Conrad for doing that because uh, he's, Dr. Reeves has passed away recently, the past three or four years. But Dr. Wants in the middle there went to France and learned how to do these repairs, and he brought them back to the United States. I was lucky. I was a resident, and Dr. Wants came to Memphis. Dr. Manjani, one of my mentors in Memphis, brought Dr. Wants to Memphis, and he taught me as a resident the Reeves repairs. So that's what I learned as a resident. We started doing our laparoscopic suture-based repair based on the Reeves repair. Now, you have to remember all of the I've watched the panel and I see all these young guys and I know I'm, I realize how old I am, but in, at this time, hernias weren't fixed properly in the United States. They were fixed as inlays. The mesh was sewn to the edge of the defect. And we started teaching our laparoscopic courses and people started learning about the Reeves repair. I was in Louisville, Kentucky one night talking about it and there was a fellow out there in the audience named Todd Henneford. He got into it. and. You see what happens when people uh, learn this repair. They know it's a good repair. So we became very biased. We, became, we, we thought it was the only repair around, and it's an excellent repair. The reason Reeves came up with it is the only thing he had to work with were uncoated polypropylene and uncoated polyester. So he wanted the mesh behind the hole, but he had to keep it off the viscera, and that's how he came up with the repair. His student, Flamont, published the results. 6.2% recurrence. 258 cases, we know it works. We know it's a good repair. It also has problems. Will Cobb, Alfie Carbonell published their series of 255 Reeves repairs. And you can see the surgical site infection was 19.6%. There were 37.7% wound events. And these are complicated repairs. These guys have a hernia center. They do all the hernias nobody else wants to do. But it does have its problems. It's not perfect, OK? It doesn't matter where you put your mesh. If you want a functioning abdominal wall, put it wherever you want. Do an eye palm, do an onlay, do an underlay, do a sublay, do it, put it on its side. It really doesn't matter. This is a study out of Scandinavia, Johansson. They use the biodeck machine, the lady sitting on that machine. These are big hernias, large or giant hernias. They put the mesh in every location. Then they measured the abdominal wall strength afterwards, and they found it didn't matter. You could put it as an IPOM, you could put it as a sublay, you could put it as an onlay. The abdominal wall strength was the same wherever you put the mesh. Chevrel was a founding member of the European Hernia Society. He was also a founding member of the journal, the World Journal of Hernia, that we all use and read. This was Chevrel's technique. He believed that if you close the anterior fascia in the midline, he would cut these flaps, fold in the midline, that, that midline closure was key. And he would put fiber and glue over that midline closure, and then he would suture his mesh in place. Rath and Chevrel went to the lab and they used fresh cadavers and they measured the strength of the posterior sheath. And he found that the posterior sheath was very, very weak. And it was the first layer that sustained the action of any increased abdominal pressure. So when you had a really strong piece of mesh there, the posterior sheath would give away and expose the viscera to the mesh. And so that's why he became a fan of the onlay. Now again, Chevrel disappeared. He was doing this the same time as Reeves. And people were doing his repair. 
but we in America got so focused on the Reeves repair, I was as guilty as everyone. We said the onlay was terrible. When I first started talking about the onlay five years ago, all these guys were trying to, I mean, they, were, they, they thought I was nuts, okay? And people still think I am, but we forgot a good repair. Chevrel felt that the onlay position of the mesh allows its tension to be determined at the moment of fixation. And when you do this, you will find he was exactly correct. You also find that adhesives have an immediate effect on the fixation of the prosthesis. If the mesh becomes infected, you never lose your mesh. And you don't have to go fight and, and, and worry about bowel being stuck to the mesh. This was Chevrel's results. His recurrence rate was better than Reeves. Reeves was 6.2%. Chevrel's were 4.9%. Look at that follow-up, 93% follow-up. You don't see a hernia study where you get 93% follow-up up to 20 years, okay? Doesn't happen. How can I see if I can start? That's, uh, so 2003, I saw Namir Kakuda in the audience, and Namir Kakuda started to work on adhesives along with Schwab and, and, and Kess, showing that the shear forces are resisted best with adhesive fixation. So I started doing my TEPs in 2003 with adhesives. I think the data supports it. That's why I do it. So we started looking, we've got an adhesive lab with our engineers, and we started looking at the biomechanical properties of adhesive fixation, and we found that adhesive fixation is a function of surface area alone. Mechanical fixation, sutures and tacks, are a function of the strength of the tissue, as well as the, the, the tissue and, and the uh, suture and tack strength. The adhesives do better job of load sharing. There's less contraction with adhesives. We found this in our lamb. The histology is exactly the same. In addition, we and, and Brent Matthews have shown that mechanical fixation weakens your mesh. So one, th one day in 2010, I, I had a patient and I laid a big piece of lightweight or medium weight polypropylene mesh and just used glue for fixation. So uh, Nate Stoics went back and looked at 50 of these and we published it and thought maybe there was something to it. At this meeting last year, one of my uh, residents presented uh, our outcome in 97 uh, uh, patients with the onlay. Uh, follow-up one year, up to three years max follow-up, in which incisional hernias, and anyway, I'm not going to, but same kind of stuff that you see in any repair, seromas, infections, skin breakdown. This is before, also, we, we really didn't know who to do this operation on. We're, we're learning better who to do this operation on. You can do it in contaminated situations and your mesh, you can salvage your mesh. We didn't lose any mesh in these 90-some uh, operations. So um, Ben Polus of the uh, American Heritage Society of Quality Collaborative said, well, let's look at this. So some people out there are doing onlays and some people are doing sublays. Let's look at, see what the data shows. And you can see the population, clean wounds, match cohort group, onlay adhesive versus sublay. Patients were matched on junior operating room time, BMI hernia, and the uh, ventral hernia working group grade. So Ben uh, looked at the power calculation, and these are historical rates of onlay SSI, and the QC rates of sublay SSI are 6%. So they figured they needed two sublays for every one onlay to get a power of 85%. And any power greater than 80% is a good study, so this is what they needed. So again, this is the comparison, the clean cases, sublay versus onlay plus adhesive. SSIs is what they're looking at. Results, they found 91 patients with the onlay. Now these aren't all mine. Uh, other people are doing this crazy operation, but uh, uh, this is all that's on the QC. They found 171 patients in the sublay group. 23% were interprepared. Now you can see the different sublay techniques there. There's multiple different techniques for the sublay. What'd they find? When you look at the onlay and the sublay, the groups were really almost identical. Very little difference between the groups. SSIs, no statistical significant difference. The onlay was 5%, sublay was 3%. When you look at this is surgical site occurrence requiring procedural intervention. That means anything, anything, seroma, no matter what. When you look at that, the onlay adhesive, it was 5%, sublay was 8%. Not statistically significant. Surgical site occurrences, onlay plus adhesive was 12%, sublay was 
to see cellulitis with 0%, 4%, 0%, 1%, 1%, not statistically significant. This is a guy that, uh, six-time loser, came to me from Alabama, two big defects, stick it out. When he stood up, this one was the one that hung all the way down to the floor. We did some releases, got him closed, put some mesh on. That's the glue with uh, tacks there. So we brought him back to the office. Do you have the audio? Do you have the audio on that? I guess they don't. Anyway. Uh, see if we got the audio on the next one. Maybe have the uh, audio. Taking any pain pills? No. No pain pills? When's the last no, time you I'm a tough old man. When did you take your last pain pill? I don't know. Long I ain't took but five since I left here at the hospital. <laughs> okay. I'm serious. I ain't. I drove all the way back over here Saturday <laughs> <laughs> to, to Bass Pro Shop. Did you really? <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to the, the South. South. How many days since we did your surgery now? Oh, what see, can we go to the next one? Here he is. So that is, that's him, you know, several weeks later. So uh, it's simple and it's easy. The pain is dramatically less. It's not for every patient. Technique's critical. You get immediate fixation of a, a very inexpensive piece of mesh. That 30 by 30 is 150 bucks. What you'll appreciate, the tension's immediately taken off the midline. You can do it in non-midline hernias. And like Chevrolet said, fiber and glue allows immediate fixation of the prosthesis over its entire surface giving the effect of an instantaneous repair and thus avoiding a delay during many during which many recurrences occur thank you very much